a little bit of a disclaimer. Uh, I did have an incident on my computer where I lost this entire video. I was able to recover almost all of the files. Four of them were still missing. Three of them I wasn't really too worried about. One of them was a little bit bigger part. It wasn't anything important. It was just a uh, part of the uh, caving footage later on that you'll see. Um, but anyways, thanks for your patience. I appreciate you guys watching the series and let's jump into the video. Hello everybody, this is Prowl and welcome to another great episode on the Bedrock Guide and today is all about caving. But before we jump into the caving preparation, which we're going to do here in just a second, let me go over a few things that I've done between episodes to catch you guys up. We expanded our sugar cane to take advantage of all of the edge space going all the way around our little lakes here, our little ponds here, as well as we have added pumpkins. It is almost Halloween and we want to get festive, so we're going to grow, start growing some pumpkins for us to be able to use. Maybe we make pumpkin pie. Maybe we make jack-o'-lanterns. How about you let me know down in the comment section below. Should I use more of them for pumpkin pie or jack-o'-lanterns? I probably don't have enough for both. We found a brown sheep, also pretty rare, although not near as rare as the pink sheep right here, but I have selected out of all of your comments names for this guy right here. I am not going to tell you yet though, because first we need to get a name tag, but I'm curious if I feed you and I feed you, what does your baby look like? What do I get? A pink sheep. We got a pink baby sheep. Woohoo. Also, I have been breeding up chickens, which we're getting lots of eggs from, and I don't think I explained breeding in full before. Basically, what breeding is, you give the animal a type of food it likes, chickens it seeds, sheep and cows it is hay, and then pigs will like to eat uh, beetroot or potatoes or carrots. But basically, you pick two, you, both give, you give them both seeds, they will then breed, make a new baby chicken, and then you can continue to do this every minute. There is a one minute cooldown timer, but it's a quick, easy way to get a whole bunch of chickens or a whole bunch of animals. And also, we know with chickens, we could do the eggs as well. Um, oh, one hash from there. Woo, more chickens. And we also made a fishing pole, which you can use by taking string and sticks together. Here's your recipe right here. Three sticks, two string to make a fishing pole. The fishing pole is going to be the way that we get our name tags over there, probably because you can get name tags by villager trading, fishing, and finding them in chests. Don't know if we're going to see any chests when we go caving. So what you do is you throw your fishing pole or your bobber into the water. It could be any water. It could be one block or a big pond like this. There do not need to be fish around. And if you want to have the best chance of catching something, you need to have sky access above. You do not want to fish somewhere where there is no sky above the water, such as down in a cave. And basically you just sit here and you wait till you start to see a few little bubbles plop around And once you see those bubbles plop in they will then snag the little bobber right there pull it down and You pull your fishing roll ba ro rod back here you go like that and we got a salmon I spent about 45 minutes doing this and got almost nothing valuable in return But we'll have to keep at it We created some depth in our little farm build here by adding some posts up in the front before it was looking kind of flat ish again remember this is just a little temporary like area for us to live in we will be building a proper starter home in the near future probably in the next couple episodes but this just made it look a lot more interesting it added a lot of depth to it and then finally you guys see all these chests around we got organized a little bit another tip is to stay organized and do it often um, we got our valuables here right beside our bed we have our mass storage area for like dirt and cobblestone and things that we'll probably get a lot of uh, we got our miscellaneous bits area right here uh, we have our cooked things or our smelted things will go in here and then we have what I'm calling our junk bins over here and now to get equipped and ready to go into the caves. So I do have everything in my inventory that you are going to need to take into the caves. It is important that you follow this because you want as much space as possible to collect stuff in caves. That way you do not have to come back up early. You can stay down there for as long as you like. And I have some extra armor that I've gotten from killing a couple zombies. So that's good. We're a little bit better equipped with the armor as well. Uh, let's go over, th over everything starting with the water bucket. And a few other things you're going to want to bring with you. We're going to go over in my inventory right now. You're going to want to bring a stack 
of logs any kind of log is fine but bring a stack of logs you're going to use these logs to break down into sticks that way you can make torches which by the way bring as many torches as you can at least a half of a stack to start out with and you're also going to use these logs to make sticks for more tools as you go through so bring yourself a, a stack of logs uh, also bring yourself a crafting table that way you can craft up your pickaxes and shovels that you may need while you're down there Bring yourself a couple furnaces that way you can quickly smelt any iron that you get to make into these tools or additional armor as you go through uh, Bring yourself uh, some way to defend yourself at least a sword if you have a bow probably worth it to bring the bow as well I uh, crafted a fresh one up here, which could be crafted in here by we'll just show you guys real quick if I type in bow There we go um, one, two, three sticks and three strings will make you a bow. Pretty easy to make one. Arrows are a little bit harder. You need feathers, sticks, and flint to make arrows, or you can kill skeletons to get the arrows from. Also, bring yourself at least one, if not two, iron pickaxes with you on your way down. If you don't have any iron yet, that's fine. Bring stone, and then you can smelt down the first iron that you get. Bring yourself a shovel too, because you will find gravel and dirt and things possibly that you may need to get out the way. So bring yourself a shovel just in case you need that. And lastly, bring yourself a half stack, if not a full stack of food. Um, you can see I had a full stack here, but sadly I've eaten away at it a little bit. <laughs> get it? I've eaten away at it a little bit. <laughs> now, the moment you have all been waiting for. I am finally going down into the caves and we have a lot of entrances to choose. There's one here. There's a few over there as well. I have no clue if these are deep caves that go way down or if they're shallow caves that have like an abrupt end, but we're going to start out by mining this coal. So we've gone over coal before, but basically coal, it can be found in all biomes. Um, you can find it at any height level, which you guys see, I am at, see the middle number in the top left hand quarter of the coordinates at 60, 61. It's the one that's moving as I go up and down. That is your height in the world. So it can be found at any um, height level in the world. Um, you can use it to make a lot of good things such as torches or um, campfires, coal blocks, etc. Um, one coal, one piece of coal, this right here will smelt eight items, whereas you can use nine pieces of coal to make a coal block, which will smelt 10 times as much. So a little bit more efficient if you have a lot of items to smelt. Now, as we go in a cave here, there's a creeper. We're going to have to be careful. We want to light things up. Now, lighting caves up is good because that means new mobs are not going to spawn in around you wherever you've lit up to potentially blow you up. So we're going to put one down in there. And then as we go down, we are always going to put our torches on the right hand side. That will help with a couple of different things. First of all, whenever we need to actually get out of here, this is going to actually help us find our way out because we know that to go deeper in the cave. Oh, hold on. Let's fight. Let's fight Mr. Creeper. Go away. Pro tip for fighting creepers, hit him, back up. Hit him, back up until you kill him. Um, if you don't, you just stay and fight him. If you don't kill him fast enough, he's going to blow up on you and potentially kill you. Uh, but going back to the torches, we are going to place them down every so often, kind of close to each other. And we're going to always put them on the right hand side. That way, I know I've already been in this direction if the torches are on the right. But if I need to find my way out, I know I can follow my torches that are on the left to get out of the cave. Now, we've also found our first iron ore of the caving session, which leads me to something I meant to ask you guys to do is I would like you to guess how much stuff we're going to get while we go mining. So we're going to probably go mining for about a full hour, maybe even an hour and a half. Let's say that we're going to go for an hour. I'll try to remember to put how long I mined in like a little info graphic like right now on the screen so you know exactly how long, but how much iron, gold, coal, redstone, lapis, and diamonds do you guys think I am going to get? No cheating waiting till the end. Put it in the comment section right now. Hey you, I know you're cheating. Stop it. So let's go ahead and grab our iron that we got here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of, I may like cut in and out at different points during this caving trip because sometimes it can get a little repetitive. Um, but I want to keep you guys with me a little bit more during the beginning while we kind of see some new things. Oh, see the spiders coming after us? That must mean it's nighttime because he's only supposed to come after us at night. I can't see up top. Ooh, look, I think we have daylight there. Do we? Yeah, that's another way out. It's not daytime. It's night. It's not nighttime. It's daytime. Ah! Woo, that really scared me. Oh boy. 
That's ooh, that's a lot of mobs. Let's see if we can draw them in close to us so we can fight them. Yeah, here we go. All right, let's go. Let's go. And we definitely need to light this area up because that was a lot of mobs. That was a whole lot. Um, ooh, that's not a good sign, guys. That um, hopefully this place goes deeper. Okay, it looks like it does. All right, let's go through and let's find our way into the caves. No, get away, Clifford. Go, Clifford. Go, go, go. Get away. And sadly, all of these little caves down here, I think all interconnected to each other. And from what I can tell, they do not lead anywhere. So uh, we just went through all of those and we did not get anywhere. So look, we went through that area right there. We went through there and we're going to keep moving. If you run, you can move faster in the mobs. So you don't have to worry so much. Um, ooh, this cave. Oh, nope. There's lights in this one too. Um, so we're going to probably have to travel further away from our main base area to find, ooh, this is not good, to find some more caves. Now, it didn't take too long. I ran around for maybe about five or so minutes and found a new cave. Um, I passed some interesting things along the way, too. I didn't want to talk about them now, though, so I didn't show them on screen. But we will definitely come back to them in future episodes. Um, but we're going to go to this new cave here. Let's actually, before we get going, I don't recommend this. I'm going to run into this dark cave and take a quick look. It, it looks like it's kind of big. That goes up. It looks like that goes down away. So I think we might be good to explore this cave. So I think what we're going to do is we're going to start here and we're going to kind of work our way down. The further down you go in a cave, the more goodies that you find. Um, we're going to have to break the, the on the right rule a little bit. So we're still going to leave those on the right. None of the other ones we're going to put on the wall. That way we still know our way out. Because if it's on the wall, we on the, on the left hand side, we know we're going up. But... We need to light this up better because I really don't want to get blown up and die from a creeper. So we're going to light some of that up over there. And then some of this through here. Oh, yeah, that definitely goes down. That's a good sign. Um, let's just light this up. Oh, we got some iron here. We might as well get that while we're here because I don't think this will go too far. Nope, that just leads back to where we were. Perfect. So this is how I could tell this is probably not a just a, like a regular dead end cave. Once it starts going down that deep, odds are it's going to open up to a lot of other things. I got two more pro tips for you guys. Uh, number one, do not mine straight up because this might happen. Gravel's going to fall on you and you can suffocate if enough of it falls around you. Um, pro tip number two, don't mine straight down either. Mining straight up is going to get you suffocated. Mining straight down, you could drop into a big room and die of fall damage, or you could drop directly into lava. So don't, don't be like me. Don't mine straight up. Okay, so I followed a lot of that around. Now we're going to work our way deeper. And while we work our way down here, I would actually like you guys to let me know if, A, let me know if you're playing along with me. If you've decided to load up the seed and play too, let me know that down in the comment section below. Um, also, um, if anybody happened to be in the same cave system that I'm in here, I would like to know that too. It'd be kind of interesting to know if anybody else found this area. You could tell that by looking at the coordinates, like the ones that I have on my screen right now, to see if you're somewhere in the general area. Ooh, it looks like we found our next ore to talk about. Oh gosh, oh gosh, oh gosh, I don't want to die. Is that just lava? It is. Okay. Uh, we found our next ore. Now, this is gold ore. It can be found between level 0 and level 31. And um, it can be found in all biomes. But if you're in a mesa biome, you can find about 10 times more of it. And you can find it from levels 0 to 80. So if you want a lot of gold, to mine, like if you want to mine up a lot of gold, go to a mesa and that's where you'll find it. Um, you have to use an iron pickaxe to mine it. You cannot use a stone pick. So don't try to mine it with a stone pickaxe. And it is great for a lot of things. There's a lot of redstone components that use gold. And it is great for bartering with piglins, which is something we will go over a ways later in the series. And this right here, guys, this is orange juice. I'm just kidding. This is lava. <laughs> this is the exact reason why I told you to bring your buckets, because if you take your bucket of water, do not click it in the lava. Click it on a block beside the lava above the lava like this. What's going to happen is that water is going to flow into the lava and change it into obsidian. We can't do anything with obsidian yet unless you have found diamonds already, at which point you can mine it up. And I recommend that you get some because you can make uh, your nether portal and other things with obsidian. So it is good to have some. Um, but what we can do is we can kind of do this down through here and this will actually help us make our way across. And what is that? Hold on. 
I don't want it's a little dark in here because we got rid of all the lava. Ooh, there's another one. This right here, guys, this is redstone. We are going to need and use a lot of this stuff. Now, redstone ore can be found between levels 0 and 15 in all biomes, and it is useful for many redstone related contraptions. You do need an iron pickaxe to dig this up. Also, pro tip here, guys, pro tip do not just mine this right here because you don't know if there could possibly be lava underneath so what we're doing is we're kind of mining around it first yeah there's no lava under there which is great and then there could be lava behind it so we're just going to kind of be careful redstone is not as big of a deal but if we if we get lucky enough to find diamonds on this trip which this is not our diamond mining trip by the way we will do a separate episode just around mining diamonds but um, you're going to be a little extra careful when it comes to diamonds, which we'll go over whenever we happen to find them. And I have just spotted our next ore. This is Lapis. Lap ooh, and that is another creep. Dude, these guys here, look, we're just going to use, can we use our bow for this dude? Nope, he went around the corner. Um, he's going to blow us up while we talk about Lapis. Um, Lapis is found between levels 0 and 30 in all biomes, and you do have to have an iron pick or higher to mine it out. Um, lapis can be used for a few things, such as blue dye, or more importantly, to enchant things. And we haven't gone over enchanting yet. It's gonna be coming pretty soon. If you see Lapis, guys, you should be pretty excited because you're gonna need that stuff. It's gonna help you get amazing, amazing things as we go through our uh, our guide series here together. Have I been down there? That, oh gosh, there he is, there he is. Get back, get back, go away, thank you. And wow, we have found emerald ore, and this is so rare, I actually didn't even write down any stats about it, because I didn't think we would come across any, so I'll put some on the infographic on screen, uh, but we're going to get that up, because that's going to be our first emerald of the game right there, and we can't do a whole lot with one emerald, but we will definitely check out the wandering trader for any goodies that we don't already have. Well, our inventory is full, and I've searched a lot of this place. I've not searched all of it yet, but um, we kind of need to get out of here because we got another thing that we need to do. We got to meet up with a Mr. Blue Jay, but first we got to go dump off all of our supplies and get a little organized. And we are back at base after what was probably close to an hour and a half. We'll say maybe an hour and 15 minutes of mining and drum roll please terrible drum roll and here we go we got four plus four stacks plus 21 of coal we got uh four full stacks of iron plus 37 plus 49 that we smelted already we got 33 gold ore we got 64 plus 31 redstone 64 lapis and two emeralds i don't care what you guys guess you did not guess these emeralds if you did you're probably a liar <laughs> and sadly we did not find any diamonds and a couple other little valuable things we got some beetroot seeds which we can plant at some point and we got our name tags which we will be doing those here pretty shortly first we got to smelt down all this iron and there's a special way that we're going to do that uh, i believe i need the cobblestone on me if i'm not mistaken because we need to find where's the blast furnace let's just go ahead and do a search here for blast there we go blast furnace we need smooth stone we need iron ingots and we need a regular furnace let me craft this guy up which to do that by the way we need to take some stone and we need to craft it down into smooth stone which we're going to do by just popping it into the furnaces right here and i uh, will go ahead and we'll fill these guys up on coal while we're at it now blast furnaces they can only smelt ores but they smelt them twice as fast as a regular furnace so having two of them is like having four regular furnaces going at the same time so we can fill these guys up you see how fast that bar is moving it is moving a lot faster than this bar right here is moving because it does it twice as fast also there's another variant of this called a smoker which does the same thing but for foods uh, we don't have one nor do I, I really need to get one right this very second but just know that that is another other thing that you guys can possibly add to your world I'm gonna go ahead and smell some of this down and take some materials over because it's time to meet Blue Jay for the resource roulette Prowl and Blue Jay come on down you're the next contestants on the 
resource roulette. I think that's a different game. That you're doing the sound. Are we gonna too. get copyright striked for Wheel of Fortune or whatever uh, that is? That's Price is Right. Price that's is definitely right. Price is Right. You don't know your game shows. <laughs> hey everybody, we're back together again for the first time in this series, Bedrock Guide. Me and Prowl. Yes, hope you guys have been enjoying it. Been a good time so far. So we've got a fun little game to get you guys involved in the comment section. We've had already some pretty awesome submissions and we want to explain to you what this game is right now. Let's go. And first is our game show area. This is a random ish kind of spot that we found between our two bases. And this will be the location for a while. Maybe when we move to permanent bases, it'll change. Uh, but we will spruce this place up maybe with spruce <laughs> and <laughs> make it look make it look a little bit better along the way so check us every episode to see what kind of progress we made but for now it's functional the game itself is resource roulette where we will go through and push a few buttons and the winner will get stuff from the loser either chose by the winner or chosen by the fans the interactions you guys gave us between episodes let's go ahead and jump into each component so you guys can see what this thing is made of so if you're unfamiliar with redstone, this is a relatively primitive design. There's not a whole lot to it. It's droppers and buttons. And a bonus fact, if you jump on a dropper like this, it turns into a hopper. That's a lie, it doesn't do that. But in actuality, droppers do exactly what the name indicates. They drop things. There are nine inventory slots on the inside of a dropper. And so when you press this button on top of a dropper, it does send a powered signal to the dropper. It will drop one item onto the ground. And that's pretty much it. One item at random. It doesn't necessarily drop the first one. As you see, it dropped the very middle slot here. It is 100% randomized. So we never know what is going to come out of this dropper. And our first dropper is the roulette wheel. This is the game of chance right here, people. So me and Blue Jay, we will press the button to the roulette wheel and we will get a random number. You can see here, we got one through nine in here. What will happen is my assistant here, will, he will press the button. He will get a random number out of there. And then two. he will tell me that number, he got a two. He will then put the number back in. Go ahead and put that back in there, sir. Okay. Thank you. And then I will hit the button. This is, this is just a practice. Oh, I got a seven. Maybe this isn't a practice. Maybe we might keep this one. No, <laughs> practice. <laughs> um, and then that would mean that I win and Blue Jay being the loser would do the next thing. And since I would have been the loser of that first round, I would come over here and pick from Prowl's prize box. If I would have won, Prowl would have come over here and picked from Blue Jay's prize box. So we pick for the winner. And if we pick one of the items here, we can go ahead and say, all right, Prowl, you're going to get five wool. But we'll go ahead and throw that back in here because it is a, de a demonstration. There is one inventory slot right here at the very end, which is where Prowl is going to explain the next part of this game. Yes, and that empty slot right here is for the fan picks. This is why we have asked you guys to put down your comments and let us know what you want. What me and Blue Jay decided we're going to do is we're going to pick up to the nine favorite items that we have that you guys submitted to put in here. And the, the kicker here is that it is double whatever that item is normally worth. So you saw in the original one, like under Prowl's prize, carrots times four, right? So I'm going to have to get a four times multiplier on carrots. But if carrots was in here, which it's not, but let's say it was, it would be times eight because we are getting double. Now that multiplier is going to have to do with the next spot that Blue Jay lets us know about. So let's say we did indeed end up with this five wool item prize. We will come over here to the item multiplier and press it, which there are random numbers, one through nine in here as well. We press the button one time and we pick up the multiplier, which ends up being five. So five times five, we got to get Prowl 25 pieces of wool by the beginning of next episode. So that is how the game is played. And we're actually going to go ahead and play it for real now. All right, Prowl, you nervous? I'm I'm actually really nervous. I didn't think I would be this nervous, and I'm terrified yeah. to hit this thing. I don't want to lose. This is bad. <laughs> Should we just scrap this game altogether? I can break it down right now. All right, let's take it apart. 
Hey, we're done. I'm just kidding. All right, Blue Jay. <laughs> okay, go here we go. I'm going to spin the wheel. Big money, big money, big money. What'd you what did I get? Are you kidding me? What did you get? A two. <laughs> This is rigged. I got two twice in a row. There's no way. <laughs> okay, my turn. My turn. Big money. Can I just can I just take it out of? I can just take one out, right? No. No, you okay. cannot. Hit the button. Please get a one. Please get a one. I got a four. <laughs> yes. No. I am the no. winner. <laughs> no, 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 no. We need oh, to start over. That was a practice one. Nope, it was not. Okay, sir. So you got to come over to Prowl's okay. Prize, and you got to hit the right, fan vote one oh, first. No. Fan, fan one first. Here we go. Three, two, one, pick. Ooh, and what am I get? the lucky winner is Redstone Dust times 14. Ooh, yes, I could use some Redstone Dust. Okay, put it in. Okay, here we go. Fan pick is going in the final dropper. Ooh. And here we go. Prowl's prize box in three, two, one. Small money, small money, small money. Uh, iron times two. Okay, that's not bad. Uh, iron right, times two. So okay, that's cool. Iron times two. Now, how many iron are we actually going to have to get for Prowl? Multiplier is. Uh, please be one. Please be one. Please be one. It's two. So I owe you four iron. Oh. Four oh. iron. Oh. What a relief. Oh, you got oh. super lucky, dude. That worked out so well in my favor. I mean, That's all right. I, <laughs> I could have won, but. I expect those four iron delivered. Actually, you know what we should do? We don't have to show this on like to everybody right now. We should put like a couple prize boxes here. Like this is where you come to collect your prize. So we'll put like Blue I love Jay's, that idea. Blue Jay's yep. prize and Prowl's prize. They should be back back here just to kind of even things out. Okay, cool. Let's Blue do Jay's it. Blue prize, Prowl's prize. Okay. All right, awesome. Well, I expect my four iron by the beginning of your next episode, sir. Okay, everybody. That is it. We are all done. This was a fun, productive episode. Make sure you catch out Blue Jay. Catch up on uh, Blue Jay beginning of next episode to see him deliver my four iron. Hey, it's not much, but four iron this early in the game, I'll definitely take it. Uh, don't worry. Those multipliers will change as we go. The prizes will get bigger and bigger. Um, anyways, I got some work to do between episodes because I got a full inventory I need to sort out. And I will see you guys in the next episode. I got big plans for the next one. It's going to be great. I appreciate you watching. I'm swinging an axe at your face. And you have a good one. Goodbye.